thank you for a day like this. Thank you for the privilege we have in Christ. Thank you for the access we have through Christ. Thank you for the place where we are, which is the place of sonship, because of what Christ has done. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Even as we share the word amongst ourselves, we shall be spoken to from the Spirit in the name of Jesus. We will receive directions. We will have revelation. We will know what to do. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah! Are you happy? Are you blessed? Hallelujah! It's our first service in the new year. Wow! Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus. You may sit down. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural increase. Amen. It's my year of continuous growth. It's my year of supernatural increase. It's my year of abundance. It's our year of much more. Amen. So we're going to go into the word now. Amen. I thank God for the privilege to be here to give us the word today. And I thank our pastor, Pastor Dio, for giving me the privilege to stand up here and share the word with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How to have a fruitful 2018. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. How to have a fruitful 2018. You want to glide in this new year while others are toiling, you are gliding through. There is a way of how to have a fruitful and a year that yields increase, a year that produces results. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Colossians 3, verse 16. Today we're going to teach the word. Amen. Amen. So I'll take you slow and steady. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Colossians 3, are you there? Yeah. Verse 16. Let us read together. What does it say? Let, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Wow, I'm the only one reading to myself. Are you there? Colossians 3, 16. Okay. So how to have a fruitful year? Number one, emphasis on the word. Emphasis on the word. In that scripture it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You want to glide in 2018, you lay emphasis on the Word of God. You let the Word of God dwell in you. How can the Word of God dwell in you? By reading the Word. By meditating on the Word. You let the Word of Christ dwell in you. In, richly, in all wisdom. Teaching you and admonishing, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. We need to make the word of God our focus this year. If we want to see results, if we want to see ourselves know what to do, if we want to see ourselves not lacking direction, not lacking instruction at any point in time, we need to make the word of God our focus. And one of the prophecies that came out for this year is let God be your focus. Removing the, your eyes away from yourself and putting it on Jesus. The Bible said they look unto him. They were not ashamed. Their faces were lightened. They were not ashamed. When you look unto Jesus in his word, you will know what to do. Your eyes will pop open. The revelation of God will come alive to you. Amen. Amen. So how do we lay emphasis on the word? We've already said number one is to lay emphasis on the word. How do we do this? By meditation. Meditating on the word. First Timothy will do a lot of 
Bible opening today because we're teaching ourselves. First Timothy verse 4, chapter 4, sorry. Please, I want everybody, if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hands and the ushers will give one to you. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hands. We are a Bible opening church. We open Bible so that when we're preaching, it's not that we're saying it from my head. We are all reading it and you can have, you know, a, a, a reference to go back to if you need to meditate on those words again. Amen. First Timothy, there's anyone there to read for us chapter 4, verse 12 to 15. Anybody there? First Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. It says, Let no man despise thy you. Amen. I'm reading from King James Version. Okay. Let no man despise thy you. Mm-hmm. But be thou an example of the believers. Amen. In word, Amen. in conversation, mm-hmm. in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. Till I come, give attendance to read it. Amen. Did you hear that? That's Jesus, that's the Paul speaking. It says, till I come, give attendance to reading. And that's before Jesus comes back. This is what we're supposed to do. Give attendance to reading. Please continue. To exhortation. Amen. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of by presbytery. Verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Amen. Thank you. Verse 16, meditate upon these things. Upon which things? The things which he wrote to them, which is the word of God, which we have all compiled and, and called the Bible. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. That your profiting may appear. You want to see you profit in things. You want to see results. You want to. You, you don't want to see results by your own doing and understanding. You want to see results by obeying the word. Because the result will show to everybody. And even you, it will amaze you that it's not by my strength that I'm able to do these things. How can we do all these things? By giving ourselves to the word. Meditating on these things. Giving yourself holy to them. Meditation is not something you do in a rush. So you just open your Bible, brrr, you read 15 minutes, thank you Jesus, you are gone. That's not meditation. Meditation takes time. You sit down with the word. You think it through in your heart. You roll the word of God over in your heart again and again. That's meditation. Meditation on scripture will cause the scripture to come alive. It will come alive and dwell in you. Because then, when you're reading it, you have personalized it. It has become, it has, it, has, it has left your head knowledge. It has entered your heart. When you meditate, it, it, it's gone past, you know, cr- cramming the scripture. Yeah, you're able to quote John 10 verse 10 or Deuteronomy, whatever. But when it's in your heart, and that's where meditation takes place. You meditate up to a point where... It has left your head is in your heart. Even when you are woken up from sleep, it's in your heart. Even when you are going through challenges, it's in your heart. And you're able to pull out the scriptures because you have, you have, so to speak, eaten them raw. It's now in you. Amen. Amen. I'll give us an example. Let's, 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 let's do an example of meditation. Let's open our Bibles to John 10. John chapter 10. Amen. John chapter 10, verse 10 is a very popular scripture. We all know it. This is, I'm, I'm going to show us an example of meditation. It says, The thief's purpose, this is NLT, is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So when you're meditating, you're reading the scripture. The thief, who is the thief? That's the devil. His purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy. My purpose, who is the person talking here? This is Jesus. Is to give them, who is them? Me. A rich and a satisfying life. So Christ came to give me a rich and a satisfying life. That means in my life, I'm supposed to be satisfied in all things. That means because I have Christ, 
I have a rich and satisfying life, which means I am blessed with all spiritual blessings and also physical blessings. And I live a rich, not just a life where I'm managing, a rich and satisfying. Do you know what, what, what it means when you are satisfied? It means you're full of, you know when you, you've eaten, you've had a meal, and somebody else brings something that you really love, say king prawn. I know Rachel loves king prawn. Bring a stir fry king prawn. And you're full up already, you're like, no, I'm fine, I'm satisfied, I'm f I can't take any more. That's the life we're supposed to live, a rich and a satisfying way you have all sufficiency in all things, not lacking anything because you Christ came. It's not that Christ will come and give you. This is a past that he came that you and I may have a rich and a satisfying life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it in, um, I'm going to read it to us in amplified because the amplified seems to give you a better version it talks a lot like the name suggests amplify amplify what is written in there it says the thief's purpose is to is oh sorry this is still okay. verse 10 the thieves come the thief comes in order to steal and kill and destroy i came that they may have and enjoy life they may have not only to have the life enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows did you hear that till it's full and overflowing so the, the lifestyle we are supposed to have is full and overflowing rich so when you're reading this you you it's got this is just one verse we're still reading but you interpret it you roll it over in over in your heart and throughout the day that's what you're thinking about i have a rich and a satisfying life wow. christ has died to give me a rich and a satisfying life till it flows and overflow i have it in abundance i have a life that is full of grace that is full of all things i lack nothing because i'm rich in all things and i'm living this life not just people having mercy on me or looking at me or looking down and pitying me but I have a life that is rich in Christ and full of abundance whereby I am helping other people. That you meditated. He has left your head now. It's no longer John 10 verse 10. They say, they say the Christ has come to give us the, 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 your quoting. No, now you have chewed the word. It's now in you. And when you're going about the whole day, I have yes. a rich and a satisfying yes. life. On Monday, I have a rich and a satisfying life. Tuesday, I have a rich and a satisfying life because of what Christ has done. That's how you meditate and trust me you meditate long enough you chew it long enough you will start seeing the reality of the words that you meditate amen amen, amen. should we do another one yes, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 hallelujah amen. <clears throat> verse 14 this is a very popular scripture most of us like to stop at verse 14 or 15 because we know there is the, the ones behind. <laughs> they are they are curses. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. Now, if you're reading this, it goes this way. I'll tell you how it goes, and I'll tell you how we, the New Testament believers, will read this. Amen. Okay, just follow me. If you fully obey the Lord your God. And carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today. The Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Yeah? So that's how it's written. Now a New Testament believer, a gracious disciple, is about to read this. Amen. Amen. For Jesus has carefully kept all God's commandments that he has given unto him. Jesus has obeyed his commandment. Therefore, I am set high above all nations of the world. I experience all these blessings because Jesus has obeyed the Lord our God. Amen. And then you, be, you begin to read, my town, my field is blessed. Because what qualifies you for what you're about to start reading is because Jesus has fulfilled the law. He has obeyed the commandment. Therefore, the remaining blessings that he has listed is now yours. And you can start reading it and claiming them and reading it. Let's read some of them. My children are blessed. My crops are blessed. The offspring of my head 
and frogs are blessed. The fruit basket and breadboards are blessed. Not will be. You start personalizing it. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. Let's read. Wherever I go, whatever I do is Amen. Amen. And you go on and on and on and on and that's how you read it in the New Testament. Amen. Because Jesus has given us that privilege, that access. And that's how you meditate. So every day you wake up and you say, my going in and my coming out is blessed. It will not be blessed. It's blessed because Jesus, my God, has obeyed the voice of the Lord and he has fulfilled all this commandment. Therefore, I enjoy this blessing just being a participant. You know, I'm the third person. Like they always say third party. They sorted it out. The covenant has taken place between God and Jesus. And you are just a carrier, a participant of the blessing. It doesn't concern you how the covenant was sealed or signed or, or delivered. Your says, this has been done. There you go. Your blessings are yours. Amen. Amen. As you meditate, the Holy Spirit teaches you the ways of God through his word. The Holy Spirit teaches you the ways of God through his word. Meditation will turn the scripture into a word for you. You will become a rema. Sometimes you're reading a scripture, you've read it before, you've been there. In, in fact, you may have read it in the morning. You read the same scripture in the evening, you get a rema word for you at that time. You personalize it and it becomes a rema word. It becomes a living expression in you. You know, John was, um, in the book of John, he was saying, um, the word has now become flesh and it dwells in men. Amen. That's the word. He has become flesh. And when he becomes flesh, he, he dwells in you. He lives inside of you. Amen. Amen. When you read the scripture, you personalize it, like I said. You speak it to yourself. You call it upon yourself. Because... You know, this, this, this scripture, this word of God is a living word. It's the oldest book in the world, yet the best selling. Amen. Amen. So the words in there, it says they are spirit and they are life. So when you read, don't just be a passive reader, just reading. Yes, you know, we have this um, app on the phone where you read. If maybe you have a plan that you're reading, you, 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 you click on it. It gives you a tick that you read it. Don't just do that just to tick the day. Oh, yes. Today, Monday, John. Let's go. That's it. Thank God, Jesus. Tuesday next. Don't don't do that. You're not on a timer. You're not on a clock. Nobody is watching you or looking at you if you read or you don't read. You you are the one that profits when you read and meditate and get a revelation from there. And then prophesy over yourself from what you have read. You are the one that profits. So don't let us be in a hurry because we want to tick the box. Yes, I've done today. I've meditated. Now you put it like a to-do list. Tick. Ding, done. It's not a chore. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? Yes. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Verse 1. It says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring in the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said, It is no reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, let ye look out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. To show you the emphasis of meditating and focusing yourself on the word. There are many, you know, businesses that, that there are many aspects of, you know, being in the church activities, groups, leaders, and all that. But it says that we may give ourselves continually to prayer and ministry of the word. Say, I hear. Amen. Amen. Meditation on the word is what enables you to practice it. So when you, when you practice the word, when you read what it says in the word, the ability to carry out that word is because you wrote it over in your heart. You've meditated on it. It has left head knowledge. It's now a heart knowledge. It's in you. Then you're able, it's easier to do the word. Rather than just hearing it, 
not really knowing much to do and try to do it that means you're doing it in the energy of the flesh but when you have meditated on it it's easier for you to obey and act on the word amen so number one we said meditation on the word number two acting on the word acting on the word james chapter one james turn with me to james one verse 21 He says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goes away, and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the law of liberty, and continueth therein, he is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. Amen. Amen. So that shows you that we are to act on the word that we read. So one, you read the word. Two, you meditated on it. Then you can act. It's a word that you have meditated on that you can act out. If you don't meditate on it, you will try to do it, but in the energy of the flesh. And you may not see much result. But because you've rolled it over, the Holy Spirit has given you a personal interpretation of the word. It's easier for you to do. It's easier for you to do. There are many scriptures, many, many, many scriptures. I was speaking to someone yesterday. And uh, the person was very, very upset about something that was done to her. And I told her, I said, you need to do the word. What would the word tell you to do? You're upset, you're angry, but you need to go back and speak to this person that upset you and just let it go and be the doer. The person was like, you don't understand. I am, and that will almost be impossible right now because I am very angry. I said, pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because that will bring you back to yourself. I was reading um, uh, a devotion yesterday from, this morning actually, from Kenneth Copeland, and he was talking about how he used to um, get angry and lash out on everybody, criticize his wife's driving. My husband does that as well. <laughs> criticize his wife's driving, and uh, <laughs> he doesn't criticize what he's like. Careful, I'm like, I've passed. I'm saying, <laughs> watch that when you're close to the car. Lord. <laughs> but yeah, he, he criticized her driving. He talks down on the children. He lashes out at everybody. And he started to read the word. He started to read the word. He started to read the word. And he was like, okay, instead of just, you know, lashing out at people, just give thanks to God. When you're in a situation where you're about to lash out at anyone or at a situation there, because he, he said to himself, praises and curses cannot flow together from the same mouth. So when I'm praising God, I'm not able to start cursing somebody else or start lashing up. So he said one day he went into his son's room because he had done something wrong. And he was about to lash out. And he remembered the word and he went back into his room and started thanking God. Father, I thank you for Jesus because I'm just blessed. Because How many of us know that that will calm you down? Yeah. You can't thank God for what you have. And you still go there and say, you <laughs> and he just he went to his son and he just resolved the matter so that's what that's what i was telling the person yesterday i said just pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy and i took the same word this morning when my my daughter upset me i was like lord you know right now i'm about to bust i'm like okay my breche breste carry back in emotion da, 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 da. later she still got a smack but at that time i was okay amen <laughs> So you act on the word. You act on the word you meditated on. If the Bible says you are holy, you are righteous, you are blameless, you start acting as that because that's what you are. If it doesn't enter your own heart, how will a lot of people believe that you are righteous? You carry yourself with that consciousness. If it says whatsoever your hands find it to do, it is blessed. You carry yourself with that. If God tells you that your hands are blessed and your hands are not doing anything, Zero times zero is zero. We passed that math. That's good. Well done. So 
if God tells you whatsoever your hand your hands find it to do, it is blessed. And your hands are idle. They are not doing anything. There is nothing for God to bless. That's you acting on the word. You know, there is there is the works, the good works, and there is the works of the law. The works of the law is you trying to find a job everywhere, printing your CV and giving to all manner of people, even jobs that you, you know that. Say, for example, you've always been a plumber. And then the job is a receptionist. You take your CV there, like it's gonna match for you. You're going everywhere. That's you doing in the energy of the flesh. But when you take that word that says, Whatsoever your hand find it to do, it is blessed. And you look for something for that hand to start doing, then God is able to give avenue to bless what your hands are doing. That's how you act on the word. If it says by his stripes you are healed. Then you act on the word. James was admonishing. He said, if any be sick, let the elders. The elders, interpretation means the matured in faith. We are all matured here. Amen. Nobody is drinking the milk. We are eating the raw meat of the word of God. Amen. Amen. So you 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 lay your hands. I do it to myself. If I feel headache, I lay my hands on myself. It's me. The anointing is already in me. But I still carry my hands. And I lay it on myself. And that's how we act on the word. When we are doers of the word, like, like um, James was talking here, he says we are, like, we are not like that man who goes away and forgets what he looks like. He says we are not like that. He says the, the man that does this thing, the man that does the word and continues there, and he says this man shall be blessed in all his deeds. That's your testimony. You are blessed in all your deeds as you do the word. Amen. Amen. Faith is obeying God's instruction from the word or as commanded if you have revelation or prophecies or rema. But faith is obeying God's instruction. If you are not able to obey God's instruction, which is from his word, then I, I, don't, I, don't, know, I don't know what kind of faith that is. But faith is obeying God's instruction. God tells you, launch out. Before you start thinking, how just go. When my husband was, was saying it, and I'll, I'll repeat it, when we were going to start a grace ring ministry, we were somewhere in a ministry, and God said, now is the time. Launch out. And it was like, okay, before I even start thinking about it, he, he wrote a, a letter to the ministry that we were in. God has called us, and we need to leave, and we need to leave now. And we did. And when we started, it was like, <laughs> just so we used to crack jokes with Sister Diola when we started. For quite a while, it was just myself, my husband, Sister Diola. Myself, my husband, Sister Madeline. Myself, my husband, Sister Esther. Sometimes, myself, my husband. We look at each other, we preach, I sing, he laughs, I dance. Glory to God. It went on like that for a while. But we believed what God told us. Because he said, as they were preaching the word, the Lord was adding to them daily. We believed that word. We didn't care whether it was just two of us or three of us. Or when we are so much that like five. That's, that's, that's mass congregation. Five of us. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's a lot of people. <laughs> we look at the attendance. God has brought us. <laughs> that's why you look like 50 in our eyes. But, you know. And he will preach the word the same way you preach yes. to one. He will preach to a thousand. He yes. does not. You know, sometimes I used to look at him like, wow. Okay, that's good. Most people I know. This is not you I'm preaching to. Do we not come from the same house? Just listen. Right. Blah, 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 blah. You know? But he will give up and I'll be like, amen. I'm there. Lord, you need to do something. You need to add to this. <laughs> and we continued without wavering. And you are here now. Amen. And many more are still coming. Like we've heard, we've heard the prophecy. Grace ring will be known all over. All over for yeah. preaching the word of grace. Amen. Amen. So faith is obeying God's instruction. If God has given you something, God has spoken to you, you have received direction, you have received instruction, you are sitting on it, or God has called you into an assignment, and you are still sitting waiting for a gosha or something to happen, then you start. You start from where you are. I'm talking to myself right now. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. But you start from where you are. Don't wait until something massive, an explosion or a big door of opportunity. You start from where you are. While you are diligent at the little that you're doing, doors will open. If you can't handle small things, it will be very hard for God to trust the bigger one. Amen. Amen. Say, I hear. I hear. I hear. Me too. Amen. Amen. Like I said before, if when you read it in the word and God says you will prosper what your hands 
does, anything your hands does, then you start looking for something for your hand to do. If if you read in the word where it says none shall lack their mate, meaning you have a spouse, then you start carrying yourself, you prepare yourself. If you are someone that likes to visit body all over the place and greet everybody, you 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 drop <laughs> you drop that behavior and you start behaving like your wife to be. Amen. That, that's doing the word, right? If you're believing God for a spouse and God has told you, you will not lack your mate. You, your husband will find you. Say that find it, a wife has found a good thing. You're waiting to be found. Then you prepare to be found. Because when the man meets you and you're still busy, but in treating everybody on Saturday, you choose your map. Okay, is this zone one today or zone two? Let me go and see Jennifer and then Celia and then Joseph. And, and you're going around. You can't, you know, you start carrying yourself. You start preparing yourself. Even spiritually, start preparing yourself for that. If God has told you, your, if, if you have read it and it says none shall be barren and you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, you start carrying yourself that way. You start praying even over your children before they come. You lay your hands on your belly and you say you are fruitful. Because that's what the Bible says in, in Genesis. It says be fruitful and multiply and subdue and have dominion over all. So you start walking in the light of that. You start getting yourself ready, preparing your home, preparing your heart. I'm going to be a mom soon. I'm going to be a mom soon. And from your mouth, what you say, you will have it. Because that's what Mark 11, 23 says. Say whatsoever you, you, you ask or you say, you speak to it. Whatever you say, you will have. Believing in your heart and not doubting. Amen. Amen. So number one, we said meditation on the word. Number two, we said acting on the word. Number three is confessing the word. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Because of our time, I read verse 5. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. Amen. That's confessing the word. He has said that ye may boldly say, What has God said concerning you? Okay? So that ye may boldly say. That's one of it. One out of millions of things that are in this Bible. So when you, when you sit down, you're doing your word study, you read the word, you meditated on it, you act on the word, then you confess that same word. That's where faith, your faith meets up with your confession and produces results for you. That's where your faith meets up with your confession. When you, con when you confess, you keep speaking it, not wavering. You know, most times I notice why a lot of us, we don't really see what we desire. It's because we die halfway confessing. You confess one month. Ah, it, it, should have, it should be enough to bring it now. You're, you're measuring for God. For this kind of thing that I need, one week confession should, should handle that, you know? For, for a bigger one, yeah, maybe two months. No, you confess till you see it. Don't do math. You know, human mind, we, we like logic. One plus one, two. 2 plus 2, 4. We like, okay, if I do this by this time, it should, yeah. By the calculation, or you hear people say, by the looks of, to please don't, don't do, don't look for God. Do the word. Just keep confessing, keep speaking it. Keep confessing it, keep speaking it. My youth is renewed like an equal. We heard Sister Sarah um, read the word to us um, earlier. In that Psalms 103, my youth is renewed like an eagle. That's, that's what the Bible says. You speak it over yourself. So when people see you, you are 40, they think you are 14. That's how it should be. It's not by purchasing anti wrinkle, anti this, anti that, face lift, face shape. Yeah, though they're good, but don't waste money on that because you have the word. Use your money to buy yourself something else or take yourself to Dubai, have a good time rather than spending it on anti wrinkle. Because the word dwells in you, so you speak. My youth is that's one of the scriptures that I love. I speak it for myself daily. So when people see me, like we went to a party yesterday and my son he had to announce me by force. They were having a, a dance. Parents were supposed to come out and dance. 
and I was hoping in my mind, Lord, the Holy Spirit had told me, that boy will call you. I said, Lord, not in this party. They will not know me. And he went there, can you call my mommy to, to come and dance? They were looking for one more person. I said, Lord. The lady said, where is the mom? Someone's what's your name, Kairis? Where is the mom? They were all looking. Me too. I was like, where is the mom? <laughs> and then he said, over there. I said, I'm their nanny. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, I stood up. But you know that that's 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 what I'm saying. Confessing the word, you speak the word, you keep saying it over yourself. And what most people, when they see me, especially at work, when people ask me, "You have children?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm married." You are married. Yes, and do I know? How old are you? Oh Lord, there we go. They always like you look way younger than how old you are. You look like a baby. You know, if I wasn't a Christian, I'll still get away with child ghost first. Amen. <laughs> so confessing the word, he has said that we may boldly say. You don't say it because you're 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 saying it a little. Don't 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 let me shout it too much in case my you stand and you say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are bold. They they think you're fighting somebody. You you speak it. He has said it. If you didn't say it, I will not have a platform to say. But he has said that I can say it. And not only say it, boldly standing, knowing my place of authority, and I speak and I say it. Amen. In this 2018, please don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. Let your mouth, let it be the instrument where you speak your way into things. You speak your way over situations. You speak your way over challenges. You speak your way in any circumstances. If you have a friend that doesn't know how to speak, you help them speak because your faith can work for them. When you say it, it will happen because you are a son of God. Amen. Mark 11, 23, like I said, he said, you will have what you say. You will have it. And Proverbs 18, 21, it says the power of life and death, it lies in the tongue. It says, therefore, choose life. It even helped you to choose, you know, <laughs> in case you were wondering. Okay, if you are left in there, the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Full stop. And it went. You'd be like, okay, so which one should I choose? I choose life. Amen. Amen. Your words carry power. Your words, they carry power. Daily, when you speak, is it that you're speaking life or you're speaking death? Yes. And most times, including, I'm talking to myself now, amen? Including myself, we need to take stock of things we say daily. If, if you can, keep a log or record it and play it back. You might be surprised to hear a lot of death that's spoken daily. Over situations, over children, because gosh, they can drive you. But we still walk in love and we speak life. Amen. 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 We speak life. We speak life. We speak life. Over a second. Someone upset you. Speak life. Amen. You're going through a challenge. Speak life. You need you need money. Your 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 you need finances. Speak life. Speak life over it. Speak life over it. Your career. You want to change a job. You need direction or which turn to take. Speak life. Because the power has already been given to us. And it depends on what we do. You know, God is a good God. He does not override our, our will. He, he gives you to you and he tells you do what you want with it. It doesn't, it doesn't possess. It will tell you, it, it, I, I step back. When you need me to come in, I'll come in. When you invite me to. So he has given us that power. Please speak life. Say, I will speak life. I will speak life. In 2018, my word will be life. Now, going back again, we said one is um, giving ourselves to the word. How to have a fruitful 2018. Number two is prayer. Prayer. I can't even stress that. Prayer. As we pray, we fellowship with the Father. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 to 4. He says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh unto men, speaketh not unto men, pardon me, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mystery. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. 
But he that prophesies edifies the church. Amen. Amen. You want to edify yourself? You pray in tongues. Jude 20 tells us, standing on your most holy faith, praying the Holy Ghost. That's how we charge up ourselves. The same way you charge your phone daily. Some of us will carry charger about. Go to work, there's a charger there. Come to church, there's a charger there. I'm not picking on anybody, you know who you are. Amen. <laughs> you charge up because you need it. You need it to function. And we should desire to function all the time. So we should keep charging. Don't wait till it dies. Like my phone, 20% it will ping you. 20% left. Don't wait till it gets to rent. Charge it. Keep charging. Keep firing. Keep putting the flame. Let it burn. Keep burning. Yeah, burning. So that the devil will be able to say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You also, I know. You can, I know. Amen. Don't let him say, who are you? <laughs> Amen. We need to pray. We pray to edify. We pray to build ourselves. We build. And when you build yourself, you will... You, how many of us know that with a, a tall building, you know this like high-rise building, when there is like um, uh, this adverse weather and all that, it will affect a smaller house than, than a, the one with height, right? It's the same thing. When you build yourself to a level, many, many things like headache, Leg pain, back pain. You, you have gone above because you, 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 you built yourself whereby the devil cannot even is 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 here and you can just Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you pray to build yourself. Your life produces results based on what you think on and what you speak of. Our lives produces results based on what we think on and what we speak of. What are the things you think on, which is meditation? What are the things you speak, which is life? Your life will produce after that. Amen. Amen. Your results in life are a function of what you feed and feast on. What do you feed on? One of our fathers in faith, he said he always has a pocket Bible and puts it there. When he finishes meal, go and have the spiritual meal. Because if I can eat physical food, I should also feed the, the, the spirit. Amen. Amen. Prayer triggers the supernatural as it activates angels who are ministering spirits for us. Hebrews 1 verse 14. I have to move with speed now. Wow, I'm doing very well. I thought to myself, how will I last one hour? I have 15 minutes more. Say grace abounds. <laughs> Hebrews 1. Did I say Hebrews 1? Yes, Hebrews 1 verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? That's you and I. We are heirs of salvation. And the angels, they are ministering spirits. They are sent forth by who? By God, not us. As I have told us before, you are an angel. You don't now start um, having discussion. Angel Gabriel, you today, I want to send you to Peckham. Now, in the game, bro, you, you will go to Dustin. There are people there that, no, 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 no. They don't, they don't take instructions from us. They take instructions from God. But we can connect to what God tells them to do for you. Amen. They are ministering spirits. And they are sent for to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. So prayer, it triggers the supernatural. It activates the angels to work on your behalf. Amen. 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 Prayer is God's legal permit to function on earth. We said this before. It's what gives God the legal right to function on earth. Because when Adam, the first Adam, when he um, sinned, the God of this world took over. He gave that right to the devil. And God will not take it back like that because God is the God of order. But now, Jesus, who is the second Adam, has died and has, has, has given us that privilege to be able to um, take the devil's hand off our cases, whereby we can put him in his place. Amen. So when we pray, we give God the legal right to come on earth and do what he's supposed to do. Amen. Remember uh, when uh, Peter was captured and um, the, the, the church, they prayed for him. What happened when they prayed for him? While they were praying. God sent an angel, right? Yeah. Sent an angel and he was released. Okay? And also Paul and Silas, what happened to them? 
as they themselves were ministering and singing unto the Lord in the prison, an angel appeared. So we see that angels are real and they are ministering spirit sent forth by God. They take orders from God, but they serve us. Amen. 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 Number three, how to live a fruitful 2018. Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Say, I live a life of thanksgiving. I live a life of thanksgiving. My mouth will never murmur. Come on now. Are you here? My mouth will never murmur. Nor complain. But it will be full of thanksgiving. Amen. The Christian life is of joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Romans 14 verse 17. Romans 14, 17. It says the kingdom of God is joy, righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So our life as a New Testament believer is of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Throughout the time Jesus did a miracle in the Bible all through. Like when he broke the bread and multiplied it. What did he do? And gave thanks to God. Amen. That's what he does all the time. And he was doing that to show us how things should be done. And that's why Philippians 4, I think verse 4, was saying with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, he ended it with thanksgiving. So you can make your, your, your supplication unto, unto the Lord. You can pray, but you end it with thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, I like to start with thanksgiving. And then, you know, I make it like a sandwich. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving. supplication, thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> the smart way. So you think we, we live a life of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the kingdom life. It is the way we put our thoughts on God, on the Father and His goodness. When you are thankful all the time, you put your mind on what the Father has done for you. And the more you are conscious of what He has done for you, the more you know the access and the you don't even have a limit. The more you know the unlimited access that you have in Christ but it, it, it makes you stay humble all the time when you're thankful because when you start having wings like they say and you start believing yes I raised the dead what's all that Did someone died here who is this <laughs> you have died how many days stand up <laughs> you, know, you start having small small wings <laughs> I think I've listened to Pastor Dyer a long time I crack a lot of jokes right I'm supposed to do the work Amen. It's not having wings, and they say you have died. Oh yeah, <laughs> stand up. But when you live a life of thanksgiving, you don't take it for granted. You know, if God, though that will not happen, should depart from you, you and the person that died, there's no difference. You know, even though you are still physically alive, you are, you are on the same platform. But when you know that it is not of your own power, not your might. You will take it as a privilege. And even when you're ministering to somebody, you know that for you to be able to do that is because somebody paved the way for us to be able to do that. And that's thanksgiving. For everything that you receive, for even things that you receive that you do not see, you ought to give God thanks. Say, I will give God thanks. In this 2018, I will live a life of thanksgiving. Amen. Thanksgiving is the way we receive the realities of Christ to manifest in our lives practically. Thanksgiving is the way we receive realities of Christ to manifest practically. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 to 5 in the Amplified, it says, For everything God has created is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. Do you see that? If it is to be received with gratitude. For it is sanctified, set apart, dedicated to God by means of the word of God and prayer. Amen. So thanksgiving is the way we receive realities of Christ to manifest in our lives. As I close up now. In 2018, God will lead us. And this is the year that we're in now. God will lead us and He will lead us all the way through. Say amen to that. Amen. And there are ways that God leads. One, through His Word. We 
We said that, reading the word, meditating, acting on the word, confessing the word. Amen? He also leads through inner witness and prompting. So sometimes you want to do something and you get a prompting not to. That's the Holy Spirit. He's not forceful. He's subtle, but it's very gentle, but it's there. And when we yield, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, which means yielding ourselves to the Spirit, we're able to pick those Little but is there. I won't call it little. It's mighty but it's very soft and subtle. Is there? We'll be able to pick the signal. Amen. God also leads us through inner peace. You you want to take a step in your life and you feel peace to go ahead with it. There's something that I've I've I've, I've wanted to do. I wanted to do it last year. I sought advice and all that and uh, legal advice and I was told no don't do it just wait um, it's not time for you to do it it will be time for you to do it in so 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 yeah so I thought okay all right so I was praying about it and I said Lord I want to I want to take the step and you know what the Lord said to me he said as you want it you will have it Amen. but you will know you you know there's there's a way somebody tells you sorry and somebody tells you, I'm so sorry. And somebody tells you, sorry. You, you understand? You, you get the tone. So I knew, mm -hmm. if you really want it, you'll have it. But if I were you, I'd wait. Okay. So I prayed again. Lord, what? It's like I'm pestering the Lord. I really, really want to do this thing because I want to get it out of the way. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, it's up to you. But it's best to wait. That's the kind of leading that God will lead you. You, would, you, would, you want to do so. Every time I think, I think about doing it, my heart skips. Not skips for joy or excitement. Skips that mm -hmm, if I were you, I would just, you know, don't, don't waste your time and energy and money on this thing. Just wait. That's how God will lead most of us. Inner peace. You want to take a step. You have peace about it. Or you don't have peace about it. Please take a step and stop. He pays you. And another way God will lead us in this year is through our spiritual leader. Amen. Amen. I want us to pay very good attention to this one. Through our spiritual leader, which is our pastor, we need to pay attention rapidly to what he says to us. Don't be casual in this new year. Do not be casual. We need to pay attention we need to be intentional that this year I'm going to listen to instruction, direction from whichever angle is coming from, most especially from my spiritual leader. Amen. Many of us don't know that God sends, God specifically sends people to us who they are sent locally to us, who we should follow our instruction. Their instruction will shape our life. Let's go quickly to Jeremiah 3. Quickly, 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 as I, as I run up now. Jeremiah. Are you there? Yeah. Verse, oh, sorry, Jeremiah 3. Okay, Jeremiah is not one of those scriptures we open very often. Yeah, we're trying to get there. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 3. Are you there? Yes. Okay, verse 16. Anyone there, please read. Praise God. Hallelujah. In James Version. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, mm -hmm. in those days, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the act of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Mm -hmm. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk, shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, that a goodly heritage of the host of 
Congratulations. That's fine. Thank you. Hallelujah. I think I may have mixed up the scripture. But I'll get it. I'll get it. One of, one of it's one of the most important ways, like I said, the, the scripture I'm looking for is where he says, um, where, where he says, I will give you pastors after my own heart. You know, you know that scripture? It is Jeremiah, but I'll find it. He says, I'll give you pastors after my own heart. Who will lead you? They will, God will give them instructions that you will benefit from. And it is, it is very important that we do not take it lightly and just say, because our pastor is very lively and jovial and, you know, takes things very, that we... 315, sorry, thank you. Ah, here, yeah, 315, see, we are just gone one verse. Essay, you should have picked that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Did you hear that? They will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Most of us sometimes we like to make decisions of just our own. And then when we're done, we'll go and meet our pastor. Pastor, this is what I want to do. I uh, just want you to bless it and all that. But it says, I will give you pastors after my own heart. A pastor is always sent specifically to the local church to meet the needs and instruct the people who are under his um, uh, under his leading. Amen. Amen. You know Jesus was talking. He says, "I, I, my sheep, they hear my voice." Okay, we have a shepherd. How many of us know that? Yeah. It's not me. Amen. <laughs> but we have a shepherd, and when he speaks, because we are under his leading, we are to take the instructions as we hear it. Let us not be casual about it this year. We have been given instructions. We have been given USBs. How many of us have listened to the USB? Be honest. Aha. I like honest people. It's okay. Don't worry. Nobody is seeing you except me. Don't look around. Why are you looking at the next person? <laughs> but please, we have had it for a while. Let us listen to these messages. They will bless us. You will, you will listen to it and you will say, wow. Like, the When well, you know in the service when it was said. But... When you listen to it over and over again, it comes up because, like I said, the word of God is life. It comes alive and it becomes flesh and dwells in you again. And trust me, a revelation that you have, you get it once, that's it. Anywhere you go, it's in you. You carry it with you. So please let us let us let us not be let us not be casual this year. It says following the instructions from God. It will enable you from the uh, following instruction from God from, from your spiritual leader is one of the ways, is one of the secrets to increase in this life. Is one of the secrets to increase in this life. Because what he says there is it, they will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Because we all need knowledge. We need someone to nurture us. We need a mentor, and we already have. So when they say something, don't say that's your own. I've heard, but is an, is an advice. I will still do what I want to do. Because what God has probably told you, you know, through the word, you skip that one, you didn't catch it. True inner witness, you didn't really yield to that. True peace or not having peace about it. And the last person did not miss it, which is your pastor, and said, no, stop. And you still said no. Then you are, you are whatever steps you take, there are risks. Amen. Amen. But when we listen to instructions and we take it, the way it is raw, undiluted. They say, don't do it. You say yes. Or he says, wait. I will tell you when to. And you say, I'll wait. No, say, while I'm waiting, let me. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It will really help us. Because knowledge is in, is in his mouth. And the key for us advancing and growing and increasing is there. Amen. 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 So what have we learned today? Let's do a recap. Let's see if we have been listening. So what, I, what did we say? Um, how to have a fruitful 2018? One. Wow. Good. Okay. Okay. How do we do that? One. Acting on the word. Meditating on the word. Confessing the word. And then the second one, the second way to have a fruitful life. Prayer. Amen. And the third way. Giving thanks. Give thanks. Hallelujah. Everybody's away. Glory. And the last thing we said was God will lead us through many ways, but the one I want to emphasize on is through our spiritual leader. Through our spiritual leader. 
we surrender because we know we have a leader. When we have a leader, we don't drag leadership with him. Okay, you have 50% uh, authority over my life and I have the remaining. We surrender just the same way we surrender to Jesus, our overall master. Amen. Yes. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. Did I do well? Yes. Yes. Let us rise up and give God praise. Amen. Just begin to thank God for the word that you have heard. Begin to thank the Lord because you know in this year you are gliding in 2018. You are living a fruitful life. You are living a rich and satisfying life. Like Jesus has said, he said, I came to give you life abundantly, eternal life, rich and satisfying, flowing and overflowing to the yes. fullest. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because we are doers of 